Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Oh, amen. Praise the Lord. I'm fine, too. I don't look fine, but I feel fine. So thank the Lord for that. Thank you for coming to worship with us. We are going to ask you, if you can, and you will, to join, and we're going to do a medley, majesty, and shout to the Lord. Join us, please. That was the wrong song. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> Why y'all look confused? There we go.
Thank you. Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone to church this morning. Please bear with me. The allergies are a little rough this morning. Just have a few quick announcements. Miss Susie would like to meet with everyone immediately following the service this morning if you are going to volunteer for the Harvest Festival tomorrow. If you will meet her here in the sanctuary right after the service, it's going to be a brief meeting. And there is a correction for the bulletin. The healing service starts today at 5.30 and not at 7. They will be leaving the church here today at 4.45 if you'd like to ride with the van or follow the van. But the service does start at 5.30 and that's at Temple Free Will Baptist Church. Monday, tomorrow is going to be our Harvest Fest and that's from 6 to 7.30. We are still in need of some items for our cakewalk. So any kind of baked goods that you can bake and have to Susie or myself drop them off at the office tomorrow, we'd like to have those by 4 or 5 o'clock tomorrow would be perfect. If you would like to help man a game or participate in any way helping with the games, we still need some help in that area, and we look forward to having a good turnout. Last year was a tremendous turnout, so we're excited. We know it's going to be really big. So just pray for us tomorrow as we set up and get ready for that. Tuesday, we're going to have the follow-up meeting for the fundraiser. And that'll be at 6 o'clock. And if you missed the business meeting, so far for the fundraiser, our income was a little over 45000 Our profit was a little over 39000 Still got some outstanding coming in, so praise the Lord for that. We sold 1,901 barbecue plates. We are very thankful for that last one that put us over. Very thankful. Wednesday, we'll have our meal starts at 6 o'clock. And our, our Bible study starts at 6.30, and there's a youth and children's program. If you've not signed up um, for the meal, just so on the bulletin board. If you change your mind and able to come last minute and haven't signed up, please still come. This just sort of gives us an idea of where we need to plan, but, of course, we will never tell someone not to come. We'll have plenty of food. Phyllis Hoover is in our steeple ministry. Please pray for her. She's in the hospital. Frankie and Stanley went to visit her yesterday. Just continue to pray for her. She's home now. Praise the Lord for that. If you would like to send her a card of encouragement, just let her fam her church family is praying and loves her. I'm sure she would appreciate it. At the end of the service, we're going to be taking up a benevolence offering. And also, we have car wash tickets for sale, and Naveen will have those at the end of the service. And then one more thing before I have the deacon come up to pray. You know, most people who would say they have three bosses would say that was a nightmare of a job. But I want to say that I'm very honored and privileged to have three wonderful pastors that I work with daily. And they have been a blessing to me as they have this church and this community. And October is one of our busiest months, and we have not forgotten them. But this has been Pastor Appreciation Month, and we do appreciate our pastors and love them tremendously. And I know Pastor Darrell's not here right at this moment, but I'd like to ask Pastor Stanley and Pastor Frankie if they'd come up. These are just some small gifts from the church that we'd like to give to y'all. We have Pastor Darrell's that we'll make sure he gets this week. Stan plays this song to kind of warm me up. With the uplifted hand, would you unspoken request? This song I'm about to sing, I'm going to sing it as a prayer. I'd ask for you to close your eyes and bow your head and talk to the Lord about being sheltered in his arms. It's important. That's what we're here for on this earth. Each one of us was born to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Believing in him and his heart, his love, the sacrifice he made on the cross. He didn't have to, he wanted to. If you would, bow your head. I feel the touch of hands so kind and tender. They're leading me in paths that I must trod. I have no fear when Jesus walks beside me, for I am sure. Cloud. 
clouds rise, they won't worry me, for I'm sheltered safe within the arms of God. He walks with me, and nothing of earth can harm me, sheltered safe within of God. Soon I shall hear that call from heaven's portals. Come home, my child, it's the last mile you must trot. I'll fall asleep and wake in God's new heaven. Sheltered safe within the arms of God. So let the storms rage high, the dark clouds rise. They don't worry me, for I'm sheltered safe within the arms of God. He walks with me. And naught of earth can harm me, sheltered safe within the arms of God. Amen. Ushers, you come forth, please. got a trivia question who can tell me the name of that song not Frankie who else no you 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 out you out of trivia who, who can tell me the name of that song we just played anybody miss Ann what is it you say the kingdom is coming I told Frankie I didn't want anybody to know this song but me and you but we're gonna sing it anyway put the words up
you're standing and already nice and warmed up, we'll do this one. could be seated. So part of the reason for doing um, the kingdom is coming is there's a passage in there that um, takes its verse from um, Habakkuk, and I'm not going to steal Frankie's thunder because he'll do a lot better job of explaining it than me. But we're talking about tide and water and, uh, and such, and so I asked this young lady here, she would sing one of my favorite songs. That's Miss Madison Norton, in case y'all didn't know. You ready?
peace abounds in deepest waters, your sovereign hand will be my guide. Your feet may fail and fear surrounds me, never fail and you won't start now. And I Amen. Good stuff right there. You good? Oh, those are just a little bit funny. Come on. You already got $10 today. You got to be happy. Happy, happy, happy. All right. So y'all heard um, that awesome song that was just sang, right? And um, it was about oceans and going to be a theme today, I think. Um, does anybody know where Pastor Frankie's favorite place to be besides church is? The ocean. The ocean? Yeah, primarily what part of the ocean? Where the fish are. Where the fish are. <laughs> That's exactly right. Where the fish are. Yeah, you're exactly right. There's a, there's a place where you don't have waves and you can go, and it's, it's, it's kind of on the, um, it's where the water comes in and, and humans have dug canals, and it's called what? Anybody know? Thank you, Pastor. The <laughs> Inlet. If anybody knows where to find it, it's Pastor Frankie. The Inlet, because that's where what is. What kind of fish does Pastor Frankie like? Clownfish. Who? Clownfish. Clownfish. Flounder, that's right. Flounder, that's Close. exactly right. Close. So, what we want to talk about today, well, let's get to our scripture first. Is it up here? Who wants to read that for us? All right, go ahead. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as waters cover the sea. Are you still that part? Habakkuk 2.14. Very good. Very good. If you would have pronounced it wrong, they wouldn't have known. Um, 
So it says that the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Did you know that our job is to do what? Come here, Till. Come on, AJ. Y'all come on and join us. We're talking about the ocean. Y'all want to talk with us? Come here, AJ. Come to old man. My little buddy, y'all. Um, so let me ask you a question. What happens to the water in the ocean sometimes? It gets higher. That's right. It gets higher, and the tide will come in, and then the tide will go back out, right? <laughs> yeah, with their expensive houses. That's exactly right. Yeah, they can get flooded. You're exactly right, especially with hurricanes, right? Well, did you know when you're in the inlet where Pastor Fain Frankie catches a flounder, it does the same thing. When that water goes out, a lot of the places where Pastor Frankie might would catch a flounder no longer have water there. And there's little puddles all over the place. And what do you think is in those puddles? Water. Water. There are some, there's some water in those puddles. What else you think might be in there in the, in the ocean? Anything alive, you think? Maybe some fish, some small fish. That's right, Tillman, fish. What else? You think they'll be dead? Oysters, okay. Crabs. Maybe some shrimp. And so they're in all these different puddles, right? All these little puddles have been left, and they're all separated. Shrimp, that's exactly right. And so, who? Plankton. Y'all getting smaller and smaller, huh? Um, and so in all of these little puddles, you have these different bacteria. Yeah, and they're... Nothing small. What's a bacteria? Nothing. <laughs> and so in these puddles, we find all these different animals, and they're separated, right? Because the flood's out, and uh, or the water is, is out, and uh, they're all separated. And that's what happens in church sometimes. We're all separated in our own little group. And we may be doing what we're supposed <laughs> to do. We may be telling people about Jesus, but we're in all, of our sec in all of our separate groups, and we're doing the right thing. But in order for the Bible to be fulfilled, in order for the knowledge of the glory of the Lord to fill the earth, what has to happen? water has to come in and when the water comes in what happens to those puddles they fill up and they, when they fill up they're gone and what happens to all those animals that were sep in separate ponds they're put scared to gather again. there's a gather again that's exactly right amen and that's what? what we want to happen with the church amen we want all of us to come together that's the importance of having things where it's not just about Mechanicsville Baptist Church and it's not just about the Mechanicsville Baptist Church youth, but that's why we meet and we try to involve other churches. That's why we're going tonight to our healing service because we want to be unified with all the Christians, right? So when you're at school, you may be in your little separate pond, but it's up to you to tell people about Jesus and, and to make sure that they all come together and know him. Okay? Can we do that? Amen. Miss Evangeline? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this beautiful Sunday morning to come into your presence. Thank you for the innocence and beautiful smiles on the faces of these Little children, Lord, you have asked us to be childlike, and when we see them, we know what it really means, Lord. Thank you for Mr. Goodwin and his ministry among the youth and the children. Thank you for your word. Thank you for reminding us that when oceans rise, 
and our faith is tested, Lord. Help us to stand firm, Lord. Help us to stand firm and be unified, Lord, remembering that you are faithful. You will get us through these storms in our lives, Lord. Be with Pastor Frankie as he delivers the sermon, Lord. Fill him with your spirit, Lord, and may this service be a blessing to us. I ask all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. We will start with Habakkuk. I remember several times being down at Merle's Inlet not long ago. Uh, Daryl and I were in Conk Creek and <laughs> when we started fishing together, he said, let's stay in here till the tide goes out. And I remember the tide went out. And I remember we walked on dry ground for two or three hours fishing in some little potholes. And I can remember seeing some little mullets, mud minnows, little crabs, little shrimp. They had their own little potholes. They had their own little suckers. We've been doing small groups in churches now for the last 25, 30 years. It's been getting a lot of attention. And I think it's a good thing, but I think we need to be careful. Lord, let the tide come in. I won't ever forget she was singing that song. Rest in his soul embrace. The name Habakkuk means embrace. And I was sitting there watching Stanley because he picked out the music. I just gave him a scripture verse. I said, it's been three and a half years since I've been behind that pulpit, and here's the scripture the Lord's laid on my heart. Called Daryl and asked him to pray over me. I said, I believe this message is from the Lord, and I hope it touches at least one. Mama used to say, if one person can be touched, it's worth the whole service. Already heard of several miracles this morning. One was Dorla picking up pecans. And I thought Ray Graham was telling a lie in the deacon's meeting because <laughs> we went to visit <laughs> Dorla in the hospital yesterday and this morning he's out picking up pecans. I don't know what you need today. And I thank God for your little family. I thank God for your circle. I thank God for where you are and who you are. But I pray that somehow there would be an embrace in his rest that your soul would embrace him today. And if the tide's out, that the water would come in. I want to show you a few pictures of some of our um, some of our small groups. These are small groups. Look at them. Give me a next slide. Look at those small groups. Aren't they good? Missions and evangelism. Fellowship with one another. Hallelujah. Look at all these small groups. You got little circles of music and Bible school prayer. Next one. Fellowship again. I love that small group on the bottom. Hallelujah. Small group. Look at that music. Look what's happening in our church and around us. And all of this is wonderful. We even got a couple of small groups from across the water. Part of our Petscar team, our evangelism our truck, and one of our new churches. Small groups again, crafts in Bible school, boys upstairs, community changes. Let's see another one. Missions and evangelism. There's our pharmacy. There's our radio team getting ready on the bottom left, getting ready to build a radio station. We got our missionaries up top. Ministry and fellowship at the altar, praying together, loving each other. Adult life groups. Look at this, a mixed group across the water and here. And the water doesn't have to separate us because water is a symbol of Holy Spirit, ministry, and fellowship, even up at the ark, one-on-one. -on -one. Music again, worship and ministry. Look at those three up on the top right. Hallelujah. Look, look at that. That is awesome at Vicky's house. I won't ever forget that day of cleanup. little small group. Self-defense class. Hallelujah. And all them guys all the way from India come over here messing our church up. Lord have mercy. With that little small group. Lord, let the tide come in. Somebody needs to give the Lord a hand because we could have done this all day long with nothing but little potholes of people, a small group in a larger group. 
I'm not going to read the scripture again, but what I'd like to do, I'm going to stick to the manuscript the Lord gave to me. And to start with, I would like to tell you, thank you, Lord, for my new eyes. I have to use these when I'm reading up close. I can see you guys. I don't know how many times I stood up here not knowing where that step was, Lord. I don't know if it was pride or whatever, but I would always find it. I never tripped and fell. But now I can see it. I can see the designs on it. And I want to give him the praise for modern surgery. I thank God I can see again. I can see again, physically and spiritually. My cataract was large as my whole body. And when he moved it from my eyes, he moved it from my heart. And I thank God. And I hope if you ever have that problem, he'll do the same for you. I want to say something very simple about the book of Habakkuk. The word Habakkuk means to embrace already said. The idea of the embrace is the fact that 56 verses in four chapters has to do with the death throes, much like we're going through. Nuclear warfare everywhere. South Korea just lost 150 in a Halloween party. Lord have mercy. Hope you're keeping up with that and what's happening around the world. Crazy things that are happening in our world. There's death and dying. There's tragedy. There's a falling away from the church. Families not coming back, many of them. It's like the death throes. And Habakkuk was teaching and preaching in a time saying this, how long? How long before the tide comes in? How much longer are we going to have to put up with this dry, weary land and these frustrations? Lord, let the tide come in. The water is Holy Spirit. The water is a movement of God. The tide is His presence. Maybe even here this morning. A little quick overview. A purpose and intention of the prophet's sermon. Praise God anyway. If you know anything about Habakkuk, the last four verses will capture your heart. Like hind's feet, you'll jump over your mountains. A covering and permeation of knowing the glory of God is much stronger than the disobedience and sin of humanity. Praise always transforms. Praise transforms. I remember one time Jesse and I, well, we were going to Columbia. I, we were going to get a hamburger. I can't remember the name of that place. We used to ride up there when we had energy and younger. And we'd go up there just to get a hamburger. And one day I was not feeling well, and she said, why don't you sing me a song? I said, I don't feel like singing. I said, I had a bad day. And after a while I started singing, Jesus loves me, this I know. I was singing pitiful and evil, and after a while something happened. I started crying. I said, pray for me. I just have had a tough day. And the song changed. And pray, this is what Habakkuk is saying. Praise, praise, praise transforms conditions and situations. And the explanation, personal observation from the ocean itself pertaining to God's people. What I want to leave you with this morning are eight indicators of unity among God's people that result in God's glory. <clears throat> this is our sole purpose of being. If you want to know, as a Christian, why you were saved and what your purpose is, it's only to glorify God. Your sole purpose is to glorify God. And I have found out if you give him the glory, you will see his glory. If you have not been accustomed to giving God glory with your resources, with your life, with how you're living, don't expect to see his glory. You're going to see frustration. Young person, listen to me. Young couple, listen to me. Older people, listen to me. If you're not used to giving God the glory, don't expect to see his glory. Giving him the glory is the key to seeing his glory. And it's a transfer from him to you and you to him. How much more in a church? So I'm going to give you eight indicators of all my life as a Christian and minister. Eight indicators that you can know the tide's coming in. Not only is he coming back, the tide's coming in. And these indicators will help you in your marriage, help you in your home, help you in your relationship. To me, these are the indicators that let us know he's coming. His spirit's moving, and this is the way we should live and the way we should act. And here's the first one, number one. Consider it all joy. James 1, verse 2, brothers and sisters, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Joy is contagious. Joy is contagious. So is sadness. The Bible says in Nehemiah 8, 10b, the joy of the Lord is my strength. So when you've lost your joy, you've lost your defense. 
You have no strength. You have no strength. You're weak. You're physically weak, spiritually weak. You're going to probably be a belly aker, a complainer, a border bully, or a joy stealer. Because if you're not giving joy, you're stealing joy. Where do you get that from, John 10, 10? The thief does one thing. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. he got three-pronged ministry. And Jesus does one thing, to give life more abundantly. That's joy. When life can get to the place where when you've had a bad day, a bad year, a bad sickness or whatever, I am still full of joy. Joy is an indicator that he's coming. He is filling us up. He is using us. I don't know where your joy stick is today. Holy Spirit has a lot to do with oil and water in the Bible. But if you take your little oil stick and shove it into your engine right now, do you need an oil change? You're joyful. Would your family come up to the altar this morning and say, my husband, my wife, my children are full of joy. We have joy in my home. Or you would say, you know what? We need a filling. And I'm praying today, you may never come to this altar, ever. But I pray that you would hear me say this, keep your joy full. And you do that by loving God, studying his word, staying in touch with him, listening to songs like we heard this morning, and worshiping God. Embrace him. The first indicator of the tide coming in and staying in is counted all joy. Here's the second one. From James 1, 19 through 20. I love this scripture. Swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Don't you think all of us need to review that? Zip it. Watch out for your anger. And keep these on. Listen. And I like the one in Micah 6, 8. That's God's requirement to do justice, to love mercy, to walk humbly with God. Listening. Listening is difficult for me to do. And I know some of y'all well enough to know that it's maybe more difficult for some of y'all to do. You don't plan on listening. Why would you listen to someone when you already know more than they do? Mmm. Mmm. I mean, I, I got this down pat, man. I, I got it all together. I know what's going on. I, I, don't, I don't need to be told, and I, I got it together. No, no, no. We, we need to know how to listen, but listen humbly. I thank God for a partner who knows how to do that in marriage. I thank God for some people I've met through my trials and suffering that, that know how to listen and not distracted. How about listening to God, hearing what he tells you in the wee hours of the morning? I heard somebody tell me this morning they got up real early. That's what Jesus did. I have to get up real early in the morning, in the fourth watch of the night, from 3 to 6 a.m. I get up. That's when my quiet time is with the Lord. We don't have children. Jesse's usually going to work or going to work out, and it's just me and Jesus and the kitchen light on. Sometimes Jimmy Brown will call me when he sees my light on. Other people who come by, and I'll speak to them and pray with them. But I thank God for a set-aside time where I can listen and say, Lord, speak to my heart. And we need to practice that with one another. Listen to one another. Hear the pain from one another. Don't be afraid to shut down. Don't be afraid to, hey, just be quiet. Just be quiet and listen. Let God speak to you. Another indicator, a third one. Forgive one another. Y'all think there's room for that in the church. Thank you, Bobby Brown. I found myself going home and doing the same thing. Lord, if I have offended anyone in the church, my neighbors or whatever, forgive me. That's where this comes from. Last week as I was putting this together, your testimony. Forgive one another, Ephesians 4, 30 through 32. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. This morning, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit tells you, come up to the altar and um, rededicate your life, pray, do that. If the Holy Spirit tells you to take a nap, walk out of the church, do what Holy Spirit, don't grieve Holy Spirit. Do what Holy Spirit tells you to do. Holy Spirit is God's person. Jesus has gone back to be with the Father. Holy Spirit will speak to you and tell you what to do. And look at this. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit because we're sealed into redemption. This is how we know we're saved. If you're in here today and you don't have a relationship with Holy Spirit, please don't take this wrong. Take it biblical. You don't know the Lord. You, you, you cannot be saved without having the down payment of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is going to be with you, and the Holy Spirit will tell you what to do. Look at the next thing. 
Very important. Until the day of redemption, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking, put away all malice. And look what it says. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as Christ forgave you. Don't you guys think sometimes the easiest thing for us to do is gossip about each other? Or the political system, or the world system. It doesn't take long to get around a table and somebody can just open a little door. Well, pretty soon you got this remark, you got that remark, and pretty soon it's like a bunch of piranhas, piranhas going after a person or a situation. We don't need to do that. We need to ask God to forgive us. We need to ask God to help us and work with us and use us. Let this stuff be away with. Consider it joy, listen humbly, and learn how to forgive one another. And I ask you today, Is there someone in your life, your family, that you need to forgive? Someone you need to bring to the altar and say, hey, I need to put that person in God's hand. I I got a situation that's bothering me. I got a relationship. Might be mom, might be stepdad, might be a work relationship that's gone south. Forgive one another. Look at the fourth one. The fourth indicator. This is tough. Edify the church and not yourself. Let someone else brag on you. Somebody needs to say amen. Thank you. Let somebody else brag on you. Learn how to edify the church and not yourself. Ephesians 4.29. Ministry of edification and grace for building up others. And Romans 15.13. May the God of hope fill you. Hear it again. Fill you with all joy. Lord, let the tide come in. And learn how to abound in hope and live by power of Holy Spirit. There's a beautiful scene at the inlet when that water covers everything. All those sandbars are gone. And it's just, I mean, the ocean looks just like the inlet. As waters that cover the sea. I pray that for my life. I pray that for my church. That we will get to a place where we live in a way where through our joy, our being humble, our forgiving one another, the idea that we will edify the church and not ourselves as water that covers the sea. Look at number five. I'm studying a book right now telling us how to celebrate. Um, Attend each other's parties. My neighbor had a little party for me the other day, one-on-one. He uh, he fixed me some uh, lasagna. He said, I want to fix your supper when you come home with your eye. And he turned it into two parties. He fixed me enough for both eyes. So when I come home the second day, I had me a little party. I poured me a little glass of tea, put me a little piece of bread. In fact, when I was having major surgery and having this colon cut out, my wife was in Charleston Hospital, MUSC, 661. I had to take that go easy because they wanted to clean my colon out and everything else in my body. I didn't like taking it. Come on, Ed Edwards. I see that amen. You've been there. And I didn't want to take it. And it was a whole gallon. And Jesse went and got a lot of little cups and put them on a little table at the bed and said, let's have a party. I said, party? Have a party with this stuff? Did you know that before too long I was drinking those cups of little Go Lightly and it started working and that little party was a celebration. I want to tell you something right now, whether it's one-on-one, don't isolate yourself to your own party. Attend somebody else's party. Let them celebrate. Enjoy their celebration without it being about you. We need to go to each other's parties. This is part of what the Bible says. That's what Jesus did. He wasn't competing and comparing and trying to let one group dominate the other, attend each other's parties. Hebrews 10, 24 through 25 says, Consider one another to stir up love and good works. Assemble together. Encourage one another. There's enough tearing down and frustration going on. And why do we do that? Especially as we see the day approaching. I believe that people who are on the firing line for God today are wanting to walk and live in a way because they believe he's coming back again. 
They believe that there's a kingdom that's coming. They don't mind singing it. They live in a way where they won't let the sun go down on their wrath. And if something comes up between them, they're going to say, I'm sorry. Let's go out and eat lunch together. We don't need to hold this grudge. We don't need to cause bitterness and strife. But we need to live for him and have walls of peace and bridges of love. In everything that we're doing, and it takes intentionality. It takes a knowledge that he causes the water to go out and he lets it come back in. Pray that the water would come in, the water of Holy Spirit. Number six, so important here. Cindy Rice, I think, has taught me this more than any other person I know. And I'm going to call it something else. I'm calling it serving your giftedness and by assignment. We need to learn Holy Spirit gifts. We need to learn that that person's got the gift of teaching. They need to work in that gift of teaching. They got the gift of administration. They need to work in that gift of administration. If they are an organized person and they got that gift, study your gifts in the Bible. If they're servants, if they're sign gifts, God's placed on this man. I don't understand it. That's why we're having this service this afternoon, a gift of healing. A gift of healing. I can go back through my book and people who have called, Pastor Frankie, you prayed for this. It's no longer there. The marriage is healed. Pretty soon you say, these gifts are real. They're not just in the book. And I hope you're sitting in here today that you know what your gifts are. And you need to operate in that gift, not somebody else's gift. We first started doing these fundraisers. As the pastor of the church, I'd go to Cindy's office and Cindy would look at me and she said, uh, work in your lane and let me work in mine. Bill Sports, I moved here six months after I moved here. We were in the old parsonage. He was outside, and I took him a cup of coffee. And Mr. Bill was up there painting a the window. And I said, uh, Mr. Bill, you okay? How old are you? Uh, how long you been doing this long time, preacher? I could tell he wasn't in the attitude to talk to me. I was trying to get to know the new church members, trying to be friendly. And I was telling you, you're doing a good job on that window. He come down. He said, don't take this wrong. He said, you preach the word and let me paint the window. Mmm. Mmm. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, when we've been assigned certain lanes, we don't need to bother everyone else who's in another lane. Stay on your side. If I need you, come over. But work in your assignment and stop trying to get in everybody else's lane. Somebody needs to say Amen. This is what's hurt. Thank you, Troy, out there in the hallway. Troy, Troy's our new building and grounds man. You know what? Don't be going to somebody else. Something going on with the building and grounds. Go see Troy. Give him a first shot at it. Bobby ought not to be telling Troy something. Go to Troy. Go to Cindy. Go to the pastor emeritus. When Daryl's out, Daryl comes back. Go to the senior pastor. If we really would practice this, I'll tell you something else, what it does in a family. I don't think my wife has to do this much now, but when I first came here, she would say something like, oh, you're going to Nicaragua in March? Yeah, I was going to tell you. She said, you don't have to. Somebody from the church has already told me. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Kyle Lane. It takes a while, Lane, to get in the right lane. And we're learning. We're growing. Work by assignment. And when you're in my lane, be, be gentle with me. The scripture for that is John 21, 21 through 22. Favorite fisherman, Peter. Jesus talking with Peter. You know what happens? Peter said, how about John? You know what Jesus said? Let me take care of John. Uh-oh. Let Jesus take care of this person. Let Jesus take care of that. Stop trying to take care of that other person. Watch the church grow when we operate in our gifts. Amen, church. Let the tide come in. Let the tide come in. Number seven, praise and celebrate Jesus. Matthew 21 through 15 through 16. Got this from the revival last week on the way to Jerusalem. The chief priest and the scribes saw the wonderful things that Jesus did, but they didn't worship God. It was the children that came into the temple and started singing Hosanna. They praised and celebrated Jesus. And if you look at that scripture, it will talk about perfected praise. Perfected praise. Perfected praise. 
I, I've been a member of this church since uh, 96. And I believe the praise is becoming more and more perfected. I, I sat on that seat this morning not because of who was singing, but who was bringing the tide in. It didn't matter who was singing. doesn't matter who's preaching. I can't bring the tide in. Daryl can't bring the tide in. Stanley can't bring the tide in. He can bring the tide in. He, he, he'll fill this church with Holy Spirit. He'll fill this with his presence. He'll fill this with his peace. But these indicators take our observation, take our documentation, write it down, and take our participation. We've, we've got to do that. Pray for perfected praise. I don't know about you guys, and I'm not just talking about songs and worship, but don't y'all see a marked difference in our girls who are singing up here in the praise, don't you? I, I think we need to give the Lord a hand right now, right now, if you will, perfected praise that we will keep on growing and growing and keep living in a way where God will use them for his glory and use us for his glory. And the last one, last thing I want to share with you, the, um, the eighth one, very important. Revival of unity. This is what I've been meeting with our mayor. I've been meeting with 25 pastors, all denominations, and they all are talking about little to no unity. I'm praying for our church to be an example of a revival of unity, that we can come together no matter what skin color, no matter what denomination, no matter what we're doing, we're not quick to throw stones at other people. We're not quick to judge other people. We're going to pray that God would unify us where he can be glorified. And when he's glorified, the devil's going to be terrorized. And when the devil's terrorized, the people will be evangelized. That's Bible all the way through from, from Matthew to Revelation. If he gets the glory, all this other stuff will happen. That scripture is Isaiah 57, 15. For thus says the high and lofty one, who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him who has a contrite and broken spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the hearts of the contrite. That's what we have to do. If our hearts are humble and our hearts are broken, he will revive us. God is not going to bring back to life or send a revival to anyone who is obstinate, stubborn, resisting his brokenness, his humility. Humility is the key. Don't forget these eight indicators. In my years of being here, through the churches I pastored in this one location, there's been many churches, many small groups, 150, 130, whatever. Go back and look at all the pictures. There'd be a small group, another small group, another small group. He's the one who brings the tide in. I don't know what God's telling you today. God may be speaking to you and say, this is the day I'm supposed to join the church. Do it. This is the day I'm supposed to pray for my marriage. Do it. There's something going on in my life that I just need a tidal wave of God's grace to swamp over me. I need to be so covered and cleansed by him that I can know, Lord, the tide's coming in. You don't have to tell me. I can tell you, Pastor Frank, the tide's coming in in my life. There's waters that cover the sea, working together for one purpose. The invitation this morning, what are we willing to do? If we give him the glory, we will see his glory. That's where we started in the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel. Chapter 4, verse 19. I want to share some Old Testament history with you. Phinehas' wife was with child. Samuel had two boys, Hophni and Phinehas. They had gone out to battle. These boys were practical atheists. They shared harlotry in the temple. They didn't live by God's word. They disrespected their father. They had no attention to God's law, and God tolerated it long as he was. And these boys went out to battle. Phinehas' wife was with child. And the Bible says, 1 Samuel 4, 19, the child was delivered. They heard the news. 
that the ark was captured, Samuel and Phinehas, Hophni too, had died. In fact, Samuel fell back off a log and broke his neck. The midwife bowed herself and gave birth. The midwife was looking at a mother who had died in the birth of a son. And the name of that child was Ichabod. And the word Ichabod means God's glory has departed. I want to tell you something. If there's no joy, no humility, no forgiveness, no edification, no celebration, no serving, no praise, no unity, you might want to go home today and take a piece of paper and write the name Ichabod and nail it above your door of your house. And if our church has gotten to a place where we're too proud and we're too broken to know that the tide needs to come in, Lord, let the tide come in. We can take that church sign out there and get us a big poster, one of them big banners like we order, and put Ichabod, thy glory has departed. You want to see his glory, you will give him glory. Don't forget these eight indicators. And if you're here today, as Stanley comes and the musicians come, and we bow before him, I thank you for being my family. I thank you for Daryl's call. He didn't have to call me and ask me to preach. But I enjoy preaching this word, and I always have. But I pray today the most serious thing as we walk out of here, if there's something you need prayer for, to pray for someone, let this altar be full of his glory. Let the tide come in, whoever you are and wherever you are, as we stand and sing together. Stand there. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our sins. Punishment that brought us peace was upon him. By his wounds, by his wounds we are healed. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our sins. Punishment that brought us peace was upon him. Continue to play if the Spirit's leading you come.
people and um, as I pray with people, not just today, but Lord, every, every day, um, and, and I see people at school, I, I, I'm so thankful that um, I was raised in a, in a Christian home, and I'm so thankful that people continue to pray for me, even when I was not where I needed to be. And I'm thankful that I have three daughters who know the Lord. Amen. And um, I know it's a burden on many of your hearts because I see your faces and I talk to you. And I just want to let you know, don't quit praying. I, I, I had a, um, a guy that was our Sunday school teacher at East Dillon. And um, he prayed for his son for 35 years for it, before his son ever came to the altar. And gave his life to the Lord. So I encourage you, if that loved one, if you're praying for them, continue to pray for them. Get people to pray for them. Because the more people that pray for them, the more the Lord's going to continue to. He, 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 I know that God answers prayers, no doubt about it. And I know that the Lord can put somebody in their path that can reach them. Might not be you. They might get tired of mama nagging them and grandma nagging them and daddy nagging them, but I promise you God can put somebody in their path, and sometimes it's the person that we never would have thought about just goes into their path and changes their life forever. So I encourage you, continue to pray. Continue to lift them up. Continue to pray for your church. As our pastor said today, it's important that we be unified. Groups are great. We need to continue to build those. That's where your foundation is built. But we need to come together. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you so much for our message this morning. I thank you for my brother. Thank you that he has a heart for you, Lord, and that he listens to you when you lay a message on his heart. Father, I pray that today, Lord, those who may be right here with us that don't know you, I pray, God, that they would just feel a burden, Lord, that, that uh, they would just feel you tugging at their heart, Lord. And, and Father, that they would know that, um, Lord, they don't have to be in a church building and they don't have to be at an altar to, to, uh, to come to know you. And, Lord, if it were to happen here, we would just praise your name and we would be happy and, and we would be excited and we'd give you honor and glory. But... Lord, if they get saved at, McDon at a McDonald's, we're still going to give you praise, honor, and glory. So, Father, I pray for those that are, that are lost. I pray that you would put someone in their path, Lord, that would, that would uh, talk to them. And, Lord, open their eyes to the fact that they're lost and going to a devil's hell if they were to die today. So, Lord, I pray that you would be with us, the ones of us who, who may be uh, Lord, we know where we're going, but Lord, the, the struggles of the day-to-day -day grind, the things that go on in our lives, Lord, uh, I pray that those eight things that the pastor was talking about today, that we would make them a priority in our life. Lord, because I truly believe that if we do, it would not only change us, but it would change those around us. So, Father, be with us today. Be with the service tonight. Be with our pastor and his family as they travel back home today. Pray, God, you would give them traveling mercy and safety. And, Lord, we just love you. We thank you. And we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.